Happy Church will start in a couple of minutes. As you can see, this week we're inside. It's a bit dodgy weather outside and a bit rainy, so we've come inside. Now, next week, we may be outside or inside, but we can invite you to come and join us and we'll let you know more about that um, later on in the week. This week, we're talking about burdens. Um, Lizzie's going to do a thought about that. I should going to talk about um, burdens, the, the disciples that had burdens, our burdens, and how we can help ourselves. We're going to go over to Sarah now with our opening prayer. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are here today to worship you. As we bow our heads before you, we want to be amazed by your wisdom, bowled over by your love, and completely lost in you. Lord, open our hearts to receive you in ways beyond whatever we could ever ask or even think. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sarah. So the reading this week is from Matthew. But to what shall I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to their playmates. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We sang a dirge and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, look at him, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, yet wisdom is justified by her deeds. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will, all things have been handed over to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Lizzie's going to talk a bit about that now. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, easy and my burden is light. If you do not know, a yoke is a curved piece of wood put across the neck of multiple animals to pull a plough or cart. And so a burden is to be carried in Jesus' time, the Pharisees had over 600 Mosaic laws. 
Jesus broke those 600 confusing laws down and spoke simply. He spoke of three parts to two commandments. Love God, love thyself, and love thy neighbour. His yoke is easy and the burden is light. There are often times in our lives where we feel we cannot do anything right. The same for John. He was accused of having a demon in him. Jesus accused of being a drunkard. There was no winning for either of them. There will be times in our lives when we are backed into a corner, not sure which way to turn or what the right decision may be. We feel trapped. These times can be physically and emotionally draining. Our minds are constantly tired from searching for the right answer that will please everyone. Lockdown essentially forced us to take a slower pace of life, to take stock of what really matters to us. Our families, our friends, our faith. It may have forced, it may have forced us to be in our own company, alone with our thoughts. We may discover who we are as individuals with all of this time on our hands. Do we like ourselves? Are we content in our own company? Talking things through is good for our soul, usually over a cuppa and a slice of cake. We gain another perspective in, on our troubles. We may get a clearer picture of what we need to do. But so does quiet prayer and reflection, sharing with God our worries. Take a moment in our lives to pause and to speak to God, to listen carefully to his reply. Humble and gentle, arguably two difficult words to adopt in our lives, such important words. Jesus is encouraging us to stand by him and share our heavy loads, just like a yoke. There are so many instances when we are in that trapped moment that it is easier to lash out let our emotions pour out through anger, usually at the ones we love. Quite often this leads us to feeling exhausted and often worse than before. Then, because we, then we become apologetic to the person we have lashed out at. Anger, particularly built up anger, is not an emotion that should be at the forefront of our minds. It is not good for us. Jesus understands human emotion he understands that facing tough times is inevitable. This is why trying to become humble and gentle are so important. To recognise when there is negativity around us and ensure that it does not transfer to us. He also recognises that we cannot do this alone. We need his guidance, encouragement, counsel, his love. But we also need our own love and our own acceptance. I wonder, how easy is it to love someone else if you don't love yourself? If you love God and you love yourself, the battle is already half won. In recent weeks, we have been able to socialise more and more. Something I saw frequently on friends' social media pages was this quote. My garden is a safe zone. We can sit two metres apart. I always have a coffee, a tea or a cold drink. My table is non-judgmental. Any family or friend who needs a chat is always welcome. We can talk, share a laugh or just listen. If you are hungry, I'll feed you. I will always do my best to be available. You are always welcome. Share your burden, take that cover and that cake, fill yourself with love, fill others around you with love. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lizzie. What she didn't mention, but she's probably got a bit of gin there as well. <laughs> so I might have to go round. It reminded me of, um, I wouldn't say, uh, the first thing that came to mind with Lizzie's reading was I thought of Sarah the other week. It felt like you were. I wouldn't say that's burdens to you, but it felt like you were telling, you got a lot off your chest the other week. Mm -hmm. Perhaps there were burdens you didn't realise. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what the first thing that sprung to mind with that. Maybe think of you Being the free. other week. Mm -hmm. Feeling a bit freer. Yeah. Mm. Did you? Mm. Oh, see? It 
works. We're gonna go with Sarah now with our prayers. Thank you. Let us pray. Lord, sometimes we feel as though we are on a fast train. Life rushes by us and we don't have time to pause. Lord, we want to take time to see the view that your wisdom through Jesus gives us to come to you in prayer, expecting far more than we can believe possible. Bless us with your presence, Lord. Amen. Amen. And now the Lord's Prayer. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now back to Tracy. <laughs> so before we um, finish off with our um, closing prayer, on Sunday, the church will be open for its first service since um, post-lockdown. So back to our half past nine service. Uh, social distancing rules apply. The church has been laid out. Um, there'll be no paperwork to touch. Everything will be up on the screen. Um, yeah, so it's going to be starting then, half past nine on Sunday. It will also be live streamed as usual on Facebook. It's a bit weird saying as usual on Facebook, but yeah, it'll still be live streamed. What with Cafe Church, um, it's depending on the weather really, we'd like to try and stay outside. Um, but because of the way the church is set up, we can do Cafe Church in the main church um, and all the seating's all arranged. But we'll let you know later on in the week. Um, but if we're outside, um, feel free to come along and you can sit down and still be in the audience. If we're outside or if we're inside, we can, we're can. we still going to live stream it, obviously. But there's, there will, we're trying to work around it. There's no coffee morning. There's no refreshments after services or anything like that. It's going to be a service and go. Um, obviously, you want to chat outside. That's entirely up to you. So we're just going to have to see how things go, really. Um, we're all learning. It's all new, the way we've got to now do things. So just bear with us all um, as we get used to it. Um, and trying to get you all back, which would be great. So I think that's all I need to say. Um, Sarah's just going to finish with our closing prayer and the grace. Thank you. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Jesus has called us to come to him and blessed us with his wisdom. Now he sends us out into his world to make sure people see him and listen to him through us. What a responsibility, what a joy, what a privilege. We are yours, Lord. Use us as you will. Amen. Amen. And now the grace. May the, the grace, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now, now and evermore. Amen. Thank you very much, everybody. And uh, have you see you next week. Have you on? See you next week. Um, keep an eye on the Mayor's Church page and the Cafe Church page. I'm not sure if you can see me actually. I'm not sure. Um, for further updates. Stay safe. See you soon. Bye. Bye.